I wanted to take a second to talk about um, religion, philosophy, um, the meaning of life or lack thereof. Just a little history. Uh, I was originally raised uh, Jewish and I had attended a, a Hebrew school when I was younger, but was expelled after just a few months because I had um, accidentally touched the Torah um, in their sacred room of this temple um, because I thought it looked pretty when I was four or five years old and I was expelled from there and haven't really done much Jewish stuff since there other than family uh, some of my family has practices Judaism and uh, participates in the holidays and as a child and young adult I, I would go to these um, family gatherings to participate a, as much as I could um, after that my my parents then enrolled me in church um, Sunday school or all that and it was very confusing. Uh, I don't remember being dyslexic before that, but I do specifically remember that when I was in Hebrew school and trying to learn to write from right to left, and also in public school, trying to write from left to right, that at that time, it crossed something in my mind and I started doing the opposite in each respective place. So public school, I would write in English from right to left. And then in Hebrew school, I would write in Hebrew from left to right. Uh, definitely made me dyslexic somehow at that point. Um, but I digress. Uh, I just want to explain that I had a little bit of history with Judaism and Christianity. Uh, my mom is Jewish. My father is Catholic or Christian of some denomination. Um, but having gone into a group home at 14, 15 years old, and, um, I didn't really have the luxury of going to church or temple or any other religion. I was just trying to survive and go through the trauma that I was experiencing at the time. Um, luckily, later in my life, uh, I went back to community college and took the classes that were interesting to me. Um, I took about five or six philosophy classes where it started as just like introduction to philosophy, explaining some of the famous philosophers, uh, Aristotle, Plato, etc. Um, some of the more recent ones from either the 16 to 1800s, etc. Um, Nietzsche, um, all those. Uh, and then I, the other classes I took were in Eastern philosophy, uh, where it studied uh, Buddhism, Jainism, uh, Confucianism, <laughs> all the isms. And it was there that I got a better understanding for religion as a whole. In my personal time outside of academia, I had extensively researched Buddhism, chakras, um, the mantras, and some of just occult and religious things such as tarot cards, numerology, uh, astrology, um, all that kind of stuff. I, I was just fascinated by it and when I finally took all the, and finished all those classes at community college um, I had a much better understanding of religion as a whole um, I still don't know everything about every religion I don't I definitely don't claim that I I have a basic understanding of most religions um, that being said uh, I just want to say I am an atheist, um, meaning I do not believe in God the way that religion portrays it. 
in any way. I, I would say that I am spiritual and that I feel connected and that there might be a higher power, but I wouldn't necessarily categorize that higher power as the ultimate or God as, as we might define it in traditional religion. Um, I guess with that being said, um, I do heavily uh, believe in science. Uh, the Big Bang Theory and its various um, theories, um, Einstein's relativity, Newton's basic physics, um, these are just the fundamental building blocks and rules of our universe that are mostly indisputable. While as religion is more of a vague, broad concept that is set to give certain morals and rules to what would otherwise be a chaotic environment. And I think it, it was important for developing our society to become civil and get us to this point at all. Um, so I do appreciate religion, um, despite its setbacks. Um, I do want to talk briefly about the Big Bang in terms of um, how it's relevant today. Um, a lot of people just might know a few basic facts about the Big Bang or a little, just like a few pop cultural type of tidbits. Um, but to boil it down, um, for whatever reason we currently do not understand, um, we believe that our everything that exists in our entire universe, every planet, sun, person, speck of dust, and atom, fit into a single atom um, before and something happened where it went from having everything contained in that one tiny singularity to exploding. And we have evidence of this with background radiation where uh, some of our older generations might remember the static on radios or TV where you could see these gray and black, um, what look like random, um, images appear or staticky sounds on the radio and that's actually background radi um, background radiation noise uh, might be saying that wrong but it's essentially the echo of the Big Bang just having reflected within itself so we're constantly being reminded that it's there it's surrounding us uh, I think it's called cosmic background radiation, actually, now I think about it. But uh, ultimately, um, we, have, we have evidence. We have proof that's pretty indisputable that an event like this happened. And we believe that it's been almost 14 billion years since that happened. And that stars, or, or, or I should say that when it first happened, I believe everything was the base element hydrogen, uh, the zero or one element. And everything else is just hydrogen having gone through various processes or uh, changes that result in all of the other chemicals and elements that we have. Um, my point to all of this though is since, let me put it this way, a lot of our, when the, earth, when the universe was early, there were just supernovas and black holes and giant gas bodies that slowly cooled and came together and formed rocks, asteroids, planets, large heavenly bodies that after time and after getting sucked into suns over billions of years created all of the other elements that we have today 14 billion years later um but my my real point though is we're all that single hydrogen atom from 14 billion years ago just experiencing itself in itself 
um, we're all that same hydrogen from 14 billion years ago. It's just, and it's in a different form or state um, than it was what it was. But just like you would think of a uh, human ancestry where, you know, you have an ancestor who did this, who did that, you can trace it back. You can trace back everything that's ever existed was once one thing, was once that one hydrogen uh, cluster atom that exploded. And so I believe we are the universe experiencing itself. That doesn't mean that other religions can't also be true and that there could also be a god or other things, but it just, to me, is a profound thing that I wanted to share because, you know, it, it's easy to think of ourselves as you, I, this, or that, but it kind of changes things when you think we're all the same thing. Um, and our time here is, is fleeting. Uh, we're not going to live forever. Um, We've predicted that the heat death of the universe of just expanding out is, is the ultimate fate of us all. Um, I had proposed an artificial gravity um, thing, maybe powered by a Dyson sphere or black hole that could potentially tether the universe together and keep heat death from happening so we could continue on. But then I would also argue, what what's the point? Um, if we haven't already done what we needed to do by the time that happens, I don't see why <laughs> a few more million, billion years would, would make a difference. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, I, I think that the idea of God is important. Um, that when you pray, when you open yourself up and say you're sorry, ask for help, be truthful with yourself in the universe about what's happening, what you did, what's happening to you, how you really feel, and why you feel those things. Um, it, it's the purest form of being human. Um, that's what we are. We're emotional, thoughtful, thoughtful beings, and we need those type of connections. Uh, we need to feel safe or that somebody or something is in control um, because what does that mean if, if it's not? Um, you know, everybody looks for meaning in, in life in terms of what to do, why do I do it, who do I do it with, uh, and why at every step. And uh, there's no easy answer. Everybody is on a different journey and is at a different point in their life where they need to decide what's right for them, what makes sense for them, what empowers them at that time. And for a lot of people, uh, they need religion. They need a crutch to support them, to offer hope and support from community or other like-minded people. And I think it's ultimately a good thing. Um, here in America today, we have a lot of problems with religion encroaching on our school systems and trying to oppress certain people's ability to say or communicate if it doesn't agree with them. And you know, I, I think we need to, to do some reform here in America in terms of taxation on churches and religious groups. Um, and you know, I, I'm not an expert on what made church and state separate, but I think we need to reevaluate that and maybe strengthen or um, make some new rules about how we govern these things. Um, that being, all that being said, um, I feel that Buddhism is one of my favorite religions. Uh, the fact that they want to focus, uh, there's several sects of Buddhism, uh, like Tao Buddhism, or um, I can't even think of all the other ones right now, but th there's a lot of different Buddhisms and they all have different philosophies and such. They, they share a common 
um, common things uh, such as believing in either Buddha or enlightenment, uh, but then they just kind of argue about what you do and why within that um, and various paths that you can take. Um, I do feel that, I had mentioned the chakras before, I, I actually do feel that there was a lot of just universally powerful um, just ideas that, that they encompass where they, you know, you, you start with your root chakra, which is feeling safe. And it can be explained that um, it can be blocked by not feeling safe and not feeling at home. And at each level of the chakras, it explains that, you know, you're supposed to be able to love, but it can be blocked by grief. And as an average person who might not be aware of these things, as simple as they are, can be life-changing, where just having it said or phrased in a certain way can really just dramatically change your perspective on how the world is and um, what you can do about your circumstance. Um, and I, I think it's a very powerful guide for, for anybody of any religion, I, I think it can be incorporated and correspond with any other religion or, or lack thereof. It's just like a common sense type of thing where, um, yeah. Um, now, there are people that would say that atheists are dangerous or godless in terms of they don't have morals or because they don't have the fear of an afterlife or hell weighing over them. Some people think that an atheist is just doesn't care and doesn't have compassion or empathy. And that might be true for some people, I guess, but I'd say that the majority of all people are empathetic and care about others and want to do good and the right thing uh, regardless of reward or punishment uh, that's just how we are um, I think that if it's taken the other way though um, I was going to bring up Satanism um, but I meant like the evil Satanism the, the, there's a Satanist church that promotes basically good things and change and tries to empower and fight oppression by the church by basically representing the other half of it um but i i guess that's not who i i'm talking about i'm just talking about people who do bad things on purpose um because it makes them feel better because it thinks that'll make them popular or whatever it may be, those are outliers. I don't believe that that is normal and I don't think that any religion or group of people should be grouped in like that. Um, and, and also on that topic, I, I feel like nobody should compartmentalize anything or anybody or any group for that matter uh, to say, all men are blank all women are blank all christians all muslims like to to compartmentalize any group and say that every single person who identifies or has ever done or participated or been any sex or race or religion is a hundred percent whatever you're saying is just so offensive to me. I, I really can't even wrap my head around people who could, who could say that. Um, you know, we're, we're all able to change. We're all able to grow and learn and become better. Um, we might fall and take step backs and make mistakes, but I don't think we should be defined by those mistakes. And I don't believe that entire groups should be compartmentalized in such a way because of the actions of 
one or a small group of, of people that might be in that group. Um, the uh, examples that I've been seeing today um, with um, sexism is sometimes women will say, and now I'm compartmentalizing all women, but I, I'm trying not to. I'm just trying to say I, I've seen a trend where a lot of women are holding resentment and hostility to all men, men that they've never met. They've just compartmentalized. They've had either been raped, assaulted, abused, whatever it may be, maybe even not themselves, but by somebody they know, which made them so polarized that they feel the only way to take back power or balance it is to go completely on the other side of the scale. And I can understand it to a point, but it's getting to a, a really bad place where some women just assume that all men are capable of rape and assault and misogyny and cheating and stuff just because they had that experience or experiences. You know, I, I can't blame somebody if every man, man they met did those things, but it's still not fair to treat every man that way. Um, it, it, it just, it, it sets a bad precedent uh, where you are judging somebody by their appearance, by their looks, their skin color, their sex, whatever it may be. And that should never be the case for any person. Every, every single person on this planet is unique and special in their own way. And we all deserve love and the right to happiness. So, you know, I, I just I just want to share with everybody that, you know, we, it can be justified to feel certain ways about a person or event, but we need to really try hard to not car compartmentalize groups or people based on that because it just it just it's going to end in tragedy and more hatred and pain so we need to, we need to end that cycle and you, you need to forgive and let go there's we can't change the past no matter how, how hard we try we can only change how we feel about it moving forward